Now this is a figure that I customized earlier last year when this came out. But I didn't get to present the video as to how I created the highlights for the blues on the costume. The blues on this particular costume are much too dark. And no, I am not talking about the custom head in this video because that's a whole different video. However, I will center the attention around the blue highlights that you now see in this clip. And I did reproduce this again for a few other clients. And in this case, I did show another reproduction of it. And I got a lot of attention because I put in a different head sculpt than the Henry Cavill head sculpt. But it's not about the head sculpt once again. It's about this particular clip, how I achieved this. Actually, I used a different technique here, similar to the first one, but I will now show you how I achieved this technique so that you can reproduce it on your own and have the same results. Let's get started. As you can already tell, there's really no need to take apart the figure. You're only going to touch up the areas where the light is actually touching the figure. So these essentially are the highlights. Now you're asking, well what paint did you use? I used a Vallejo Silver and a Model Masters Blue. And you can see those older containers down at the bottom right. At the time I was using the testers paint. And yes, I still had the Vallejo Silver, which I mixed into my Tester's Blue. It's a dark blue, and that's about as fancy as you get with the names. Now, this is the dark blue body from the Superman figure. I taped off what I didn't want, and the process that I use now is that I actually take off the boots and I take off the hands. And again, it's just a few drops of the silver to a few drops of the actual dark blue. It's actually gonna look it like it's a light blue because of all the silver content. And again, you're only going in and touching up with an airbrush the areas where the light would actually be reflecting off the surface. Now, can you do this with dry brush? Yes, you can. It'll take you a little bit longer. But yes, the result is possible to do that with a dry brush. Now, in the second technique, the second part of it is gonna have to be done with an airbrush. It's just the best way to do it. Now, as you can tell here, I'm only hitting the highlighted contours of the muscle. And that is what I am repeatedly going back over and over, creating layers of paint in the end result. And now, if you want it to be more blue, that's fine. You can actually mix more blue than the silver, but that silver is still going to light, lighten up the blue paint so that it actually looks like this. But the more layers you create of that, the stronger blue you will have.
if you've got the figure in the black, which you see in the background, then you'll have to repeat the process for that one as well. And that'll give you some good practice. Now, I know you notice here that there's a lot of silver reflection, and that's also because of the lighting that I have. But we'll get back to that. We're gonna tone it down in just a moment. So just let the paint dry, relax, and practice on the second figure.
as promised, the last figure, or this figure we're working on, had a few too many silver highlights. So I actually went back in with a blue that I mixed in a very little bit of red. You see the red container at the bottom right. Not only did I use that for the boots, but I mixed it into the blue and it turned it obviously to a bluish purple, dark purple, dark blue actually. And then I put that into the shadow areas of the muscles. So there, by giving me more definition and bringing out the highlights even deeper. And this is the first method that I use. This is the first time that I did this on this figure. Now, I use that same blue that was more of a purple to add the shadows also to the boots. And then I went back in and added red over those boots and that's how I got the look that you see in the first clip. Now, if you don't have enough practice with your airbrush, you can certainly mask out any areas. Even if you do have a lot of practice, it's just best to mask it out and not have to worry about overspray and repainting other parts again. Now, I've switched over to the red, and now I am painting in the actual boots so that they also match in the same texture and tone and the look of the paint that I already have up on top. So take your time, slow down, look at the figure as the paint is drying, see if the reflections you're getting are the results you are looking for, and if not, you can start over because you can spray over it and cover it back up and come back in again with that silver. So take your time, it is not a race. You're trying to achieve a look that you want to have, want to have specifically for your action figure. So after adding multi-layers of blue and silver, and then in this case now clear coating it, it's time to pull off that masking tape and see what it looks like. And not worried about the skin tones here at all because I have that's all for a whole different video and I've already matched up my skin tones with the portrait. This is all about the highlights. So let's take away some of those other pieces of tape that are hiding some of the masked areas like the emblem let's see what that looks like in contrast with this blue and I'm personally really liking the way this blue looks and this is what it turns out to be it really pops out red and yellow I'm really happy with that and that's a better look with that metallic finish from that red and yellow so let's pop the head on here and yeah I'm really liking the uh, the face sculpt with this particular look on the body. Now the entire finished look is as in this next clip. A nice close-up. And again, this is all doing shading and highlighting. And this is before I did the second technique. And the second technique now, which I did a few days ago, 
and that's the video that I posted, I got so much grief on because of the hit sculpt I used, is using Tamiya X23 Blue Transparent so uh, Solvent Based Paint. It isn't acrylic, but you can't mix it with a water-based paint. You have to thin it down with a lacquer solvent. In this case, I used the uh, nail polish remover, the acetone, and I thinned it down 10 drops of the paint to three drops of the acetone. And I got the look that you see in that last clip. Again, this is the first technique, shading all in acrylic. And of course the cape is a whole different video, so don't ask about that yet. That's You can refer to the link that's in the description. And this is the finished look of the second technique. So it was a lot quicker. I didn't have to do as much shading. I enhanced everything by using the Tamiya X23. And yeah, the portrait doesn't go with the body, but the client only sent me the body and the cape material. And the cape on this one, by the way, is a fox suede. And I really like the way this looks. It has a nice weight to it. It hangs really well in the museum pose. And by attaching the wires to the neck, those two wires support the weight of this fabric. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you liked the video. Once again, if this is your first time, thanks for stopping by. If you are a returning viewer, thank you once again. We're on our way to 5,000 subscribers. We'll see you next time.